Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the Philippines, President Rodrigo Roa Duterte. Good, uh, good afternoon. Uh, kindly find your seats uh, to make you comfortable. I have a great news for you. Uh, it is with great uh, happiness that I announce to the nation that uh, Chairman Noor Miswari, our brother who heads the MNLF, uh, has finally decided to just uh, accept my invitation for him to talk to us. He has obliged, uh, and we are very grateful. Uh, Secretary Doresa just did the legwork and all. And he was able to uh, pave the way for Chairman Noor to come here I said, upon my invitation. Uh, there is that pending warrant which is lifted now upon my order so that we can talk. And I would like to assure Noor, Brother Noor, that uh, there is never an intention to deprive you of your liberty. As, as far as we can remember when I was vice mayor, you were touring Mindanao, and I accepted you with open arms, and I said uh, that maybe someday we can finally talk about peace. And little did I know, Brother Noor, that uh, by the grace of Allah, uh, I became the president of this republic. And in the twilight of our years, uh, we would be able to talk about the problem of our country, the revolution that you have led all these years, and uh, finally understanding on a common ground with government. And that I assure you, I said, uh, as you have narrated, we will uh, come up with the modality, and then, uh, of course, uh, how to place us uh, in our proper uh, homeland, uh, our, uh, our Mindanao, and that we will talk about the Bangsamoro Authority. We are ready for that, uh, Brother Noor. And as a matter of fact, I said, I was elected for six years, but I told Congress if, that, that if they're able to craft a territorial uh, structure for the federal government and go ahead with the elections and provide uh, the presidency for another form of government, I assure you that upon its completion, if it could be done earlier, three, two years, you have my word, I will resign as president and pave away for a territorial government, which would have provided also maybe a strong president, but equally strong uh, national parliamentary, subject to the rules of federalism, which will provide a greater leeway elbow room for governance for our people. I am for it. I know that we have talked many times. You passed by the vow city that we would uh, I just agreed to a federal setup, give everybody his due, do justice to the Moro people committed many, many centuries ago. You know, Brother Noor, this is not really to pull my own chair. But when uh, I was talking to a lot of the Americans, and I said, and I s reminded them of the several massacres, not only in Holo, but in summer, the bell fry, the bell that was uh, from the church there was taken out uh, by the Americans. 
And uh, because one colonel died there, uh, an American, every male, 10, 10 years and above, had their heads cut off also. So these are the things that I said uh, contributed to the lot of injustice. Uh, and uh, you have to pardon the next generation for we did not know, at least uh, the, the Filipinos now in Mindanao. So we would like to ask you that we work together with our Moro brothers and create a country that is really, that is just, and that is uh, good, and that would be for the next generations to come. Uh, it's, uh, I would like you to just say a few words, and we can maybe ask, uh, maybe we can ask questions later. But uh, this is a podium address uh, 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 being used by the president, you know that, uh, uh, because you also, once, once upon a time, a cabinet member. May I ask you to uh, just give a short talk using the podium of the President of the Republic of the Philippines. May I, Mr. Chairman, Brother Noor? Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wabarakatuh. I begin, I, be, I began my statement with this universal greetings of peace of the Islamic world. Because peace is of most most vital uh, humanitarian value to us. I came here just to see the president, not thinking that I would be uh, having this uh, press conference. Because I came here only in answer to the invitation of the president, the man whom I respect and trust. Well, I believe, as I said during the campaign, That is one single man who can provide solution to the problem of peace and order in our homeland. I'm not so sure about Visayas and Luzon, but our homeland of Mindanao, because that's the place where I was born, that's the place where I intend to die. Just a while ago, I remain is on my life. I said, I told Secretary Dorisa, when we passed by and about to enter the main gate, I said, it was in this Freedom Park. Well, I spent nine, nine days, nine nights of my life. I was then teaching in the University of the Philippines. But I had to abandon my teach teaching profession to the extent that I had to resign because I was not happy with the reaction of President, the late President Mar Ramos, uh, the late President uh, Marcos. 
In the aftermath of the killings of more than 200 of our people in Corridor Islands, innocent youth of our uh, homeland, I led a series of demonstrations. I organized one in Congress. But when they called me to say my piece, I said, no, I'm not happy with the reaction of the congressman. Why they did not uh, honor us by sending somebody here just to talk to us? So I gathered only nine of our leaders and asked them to join me. And I told them, now I will march to Malacanang Palace. Because it was our agreement in the mosque, in Tagig Mosque. Including the father of my brother here, Abu Khaira Lonto. We swore to the Almighty God that will ask at least simple justice and will not stop until we get simple justice from the government. What kind of simple justice we demanded in our streamers? We said, Mr. President, please return our brothers dead or alive. Please, Mr. President, we were blaring at the Malacanang Palace. We had a powerful microphone. We occupied for nine days, nine nights. I slept in that uh, Freedom Park for nine days, nine nights. I slept only when I went to the university to change my dress, to take a bath and like that. At the end of the nine days, nine nights, when in a state of uh, uh, replying courteously to our demand, the late president instead issued a statement before the media. And it became headline issue, said Mr. President Marcos, has promoted one rank higher, the executioners of the Muslim in Corridor. So I said, when the media came, they asked me, how long is still Mr. Uh, Professor Miswari, will you stay here? I said, this is the end. I will end my stay here tonight. There, I gathered our leaders and we swore to the Almighty God to start our struggle for a complete freedom. I resigned from the university. I always call, uh, told myself that the academic profession is the first love in my life. I was so in love with that profession. But when we did not get even a simple justice from the government, so I decided to cut off myself from the university, and now I'm already over 48 years of my life. I told our dear brother, the president, I was already determined to stay put in the mountains. Were it not for his call, were it not for his invitation. It's just I cannot reject his invitation because I respect him too much. And now I came here to thank him. First also for restoring my freedom. 
if only partially. When uh, we released from the residence of my wife, Mr. Kazartan seeking stand, after we got him from the hands of the Abu Sayyab, we were very, very lucky. The Abu Sayyab sent only according to King, uh, seeking stud, only 60 warriors. And upon my instruction, I asked my people to envelop them right away. And I sent one battalion of my forces. So they had no choice but to give us to us. Then when he left the residence of my wife, you know what he said? I am so happy to be alive. Now I want to tell you, paraphrasing that statement of my friend Kazartan, now I am so happy to be free again. owing to the initiative of our president. My first impulse was, I said, I told Secretary Durisa, I said, I would rather let the president speak for us. How often did Groups of media people tried to convince me to welcome them in my camp, except for Al Jazeera, which was, which was commissioned by the CNN, it's all, uh, another two, ABS CBN, and I don't know, another international uh, media organization. I welcome them there because I am sorry to say this. I'm not happy with the performance of some media people. They distort my statement. And some of them are insisting before they used to insist MNLF is a spend force. When the September 9, uh, Sambuanga war came, President Pinoy was asked, Mr. President, with this war, can you still say that? No, 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 no. Ms. Suarez is strong. MNLF is still alive. And now they are saying, Mouthing the German propagandists, repeating lies and lies and lies. That this group of traitors called the Executive Q Committee of 15, they said, is the biggest group. Sometimes say, my left. No, sir. Not even one barangay of my people in, uh, can, can they match in Holo. They only have a handful of people. Even right now, you can ask Jimurad himself, how many thousands of his forces, how many thousands of his arms have been brought back to us? You can ask my brother here, one of my commanders from Lano, uh, from Kutabato. He will tell you, most of the fighters are ready with me. And even the BIFF have told me, brother, no, if you go to war, count on us. BIFF. Ask somebody to dispute this. And now I came here, foremost in my mind is, how can we help our president Finish his job through to the end of his six year term. 
because I know for a fact that he will not abandon his pledge to the people. He said, I'll give you peace, peace in Mindanao. Is that so, Mr. President? So I support him for that. When he said, Brother No, why don't you move against Abu Sayyab? So I started moving. First, I sent 1,700 of my forces, my inner security, to the eastern part. And we cordoned off the position of the Abu Sayyab. Uh, oh yes, Abu Sayyab. They said, no, no, I will give you. We return back. So the 10. But some people, enterprising people of Indonesia, came to offer them somebody and claim in the media there. We were the ones. No, sir, no. With due respect to the armed forces, even the two that they got, they will only spill over from us. One of them swamped during uh, dark pitch night to the sea because they were guided he was guided by flickering light of fishermen. Then when he reached them, where do you want to go? We want to go to the Emenilek. So he was brought there. From there, he was sent over to the armed force of the Philippines. They told me, there are other two. So I asked them to scourge the whole mangrove areas, etc. We could not find. Later on, he showed up in the highway, and the armed forces came. But this was part of the work I did. You see? That's the thing I want to say. I want people to be truthful about things. If you want us to be fair with you, you want us to deal with you, Please be fair with us. Tell, just tell the truth, simple truth. And secondly, about this campaign against drug, one of my commanders, I was telling Secretary Durisa while we were flying from uh, Holo to Manila. I told him one of my commanders has written me a report saying, Kaji addressing me. Every time I finish my prayers in the morning, morning prayers, I go to the balcony of my humble house overlooking the highway in Olo. Every time I see people, young people, in the prime of their life, walking like uh, ancient people walk. I said, what's the cause? Drugs. They are destroying our children, our youth. Who will succeed us after this? When our citizens are already uh, destroyed by these drugs. To us, I've always been saying that drug is a restless, creeping threat to humanity. International organizations spending billions and billions and produce no resort at all. This is biggest, one of the biggest source of crimes to humanity, these drugs. And apart from that, I was also saying that since Malaysia is the one who is involved in this kidnapping for ransom, Probably one day I will drag the leaders into the International Criminal Court. I have all the evidences in my hands. My people are everywhere. And besides, they cannot escape because they are hiring my own people. 
even si Padan, they hired by cadre officers because they offered them millions. And then they have the goal to ask one of my nephews here, I we want to see the chairman. They suggested Jeddah, or Saudi Arabia, Makkah. And then he said, we'll meet at his, at his camp. I said, then recently they said, let us meet, advance our meeting in Indonesia. He is one of, of my members of my delegation now. I said, stop it. I don't have the heart to see these people. After they make this conspiracy to destroy the honor and integrity of my people, I am so concerned, Mr. President, because one time I had a press conference. It was a big room in Malaysia, but before, at the time, I did not know yet who was behind the Sipadan. Sipadan has just uh, broken loose in the world media. They asked me, they asked question. Before even I, can, I could uh, open my mouth, one German lady stood up and pointed her finger at my face. You know, Governor, your people are the worst people in the world. I said, sit down. I will explain to you. Because she said, why did they kidnap people for ransom? Now, I told them. I told them. I said, listen. I can understand what is prompting in your heart, in your soul. I can understand that. Because you, you come. I'm sorry with due respect from uh, Western civilization. And according to Western civilization in my studies, there is such thing like collective punishment. When somebody commits mistake, commits crime, what will he do? What will he do? They can even destroy the whole community. Just one second. But in our case, we are Muslims. The crime of the father cannot be imputed to the son, let alone the crime of the son can be imputed. No. So they stopped. And the people started howling at her. Oh, mostly white people. She was very irresponsible. So I want to stop here. Just, uh, just allow me to reiterate my sense of gratitude to the president and my promise that should he need our cooperation in his campaign for peace, you can count on us, Mr. President, inshallah. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh.
Good afternoon everyone. This is Songstar Channel 1 reporting here in Davao City. And, the... and that is also a sculpture made of a bamboo. Uh -huh. Yes, so sculptured by Jose Patino, our Davao artist. So bamboo. Yeah, yes. Yeah. And painting again. Is that the one on top there? Yes, pictures.
<laughs> yes, these are the accessories of the Bayan Muna group. This is the title of the um, exhibit. Can you read it? An art exhibit on the workers' life in Strong. So thank you so much for coming, all of you, sir. Thank you.